right. It is uh, 6.30. We're going to go ahead and start the meeting uh, really quickly because our presenter has to run off to another engagement. So we want to make sure that we give him plenty of time. We'll do introductions. We'll do all that kind of stuff after the presentation because we want to have enough time for Corey to, uh, to, do, uh, to share what his uh, presentation is. So basically, Corey Crowley is the lead WordPress developer for Skyhook Internet Marketing. And uh, Corey and I have been talking by email for a while, talking about all the different things that make up WordPress. And there's, if, if you're not familiar with all the languages, all the different ways that it comes to make WordPress come together. And so Corey is going to talk a lot about that. We're not going to do any coding lessons. You're not going to learn how to code PHP. You're not going to learn how to code HTML here. But he's going to talk about how it all fits together. And so welcome to Corey Crowley. If, you're, if you are videoing, if you happen to be watching on YouTube, for those people who are watching on YouTube, tweet your questions with the hashtag of WPAZ. All right. Okay, I think this, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. You can turn it up a little more. That'll do it. The one on the, on the left there, Carol. Can you hear me? Better? Better? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm going to start this first part of the presentation kind of up here, then I'm going to sit down because I'm going to be showing you guys some code and stuff like that, and so I need my computer to do that. Uh, but I'm excited to be here. Uh, it's been a long time coming since Carol's uh, asked me to speak, and you know, circumstances have, haven't permitted that, we, that I come here and speak, so I'm really excited. Um, uh, again, like she said, my name is Corey Crowley. Uh, I'm a web developer, WordPress enthusiast, love everything about WordPress. Um, and I code on WordPress every single day. And so today we're going to be talking about uh, some really cool things. Uh, but the first thing I wanted to do is kind of have uh, a warm-up video. And with any presentation or with any class, you know, there are certain expectations that I I expect from you guys and, and things that you expect from me. And so I thought this video would be funny uh, to show. Uh, I don't know if anybody is familiar with T and i I taught school for 20 years in the inner city, but don't even think about messing with me. Y'all feel me? They grow on here. Good No Jay Quan here? Yeah. Uh, you mean Jacqueline? Okay. But that's not good. Y'all want to play. Okay, man. I'm a hot new Jay Quan. The latte. Where is the latte at? No latte here today. Yes, sir. My name is Blake. <laughs> Are you out of your goddamn mind? <laughs> hey. You want to go to the ball I don't I don't You check yourself. Be nice. You want to be nice? If one of y'all says some silly ass name. This whole class is gonna feel my way. Now be nice. You mean the knees? Right now. Knees? Say right. Knees. Right. 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 Be nice. Yes. Thank you. Now, <laughs> A Avon, where are you? Where is A Avon right now? <laughs> No A.A. Ron, huh? You better be sick 
dead or mute. Hey, hey, Ron. <laughs> why did you answer the question? Huh? I'm, just, you know, I'm just asking, I said it like four times. So why didn't you say it the first time I said, hey, hey, Ron? <laughs> you got my son, Aaron, but take your ass on down to Osak Hennessy's office right now and tell him exactly what you did. Osak Hennessy! Get out of my goddamn cash, little boy! Break my foot off in your ass! Insubordinate! That church! Timothy. Who's that? Alright. Oh, boy. Alright, so. Just wanted to let you guys know, you know, I'm not going to go postal or anything like that, but I will expect participation out of all of you. <laughs> Uh, and really good questions, or else uh, a, a Ron is going to get sent to the. Uh, okay, now to the topic. So we've all come. Uh, and yeah, again, I will push that out for this. Uh, that's us. A bunch of other nuts. Uh, okay, topic at hand WordPress. The languages of WordPress. So today we're going to talk about each of the languages or programming languages inside WordPress, uh, what they do, well, first of all, what they are, what they do, and how you can use them uh, to create beautiful WordPress themes or uh, functional WordPress plugins. Uh, so let's first, though, uh, get a little history or a little background on WordPress. Okay. WordPress, as you know, is a popular content management system or blogging platform that is used by millions of websites today. And to, to give you a feel on how many websites actually use WordPress, 20.9% uh, of all websites, according to survey from w3text.com, use WordPress. That's a 58% market share on the content management system market. And the next closest one to that is at like 18% or something like that, and that's Joomla. So that, that may just give you a feel of how popular WordPress is and the reason why people think or, or uh, why people uh, know that it's so popular is because of some of the WordPress or the programming languages that it uses. And so today we're going to kind of review that. We're going to see some code examples, uh, things like that. So uh, why is WordPress so popular? Well, first of all, it's popular because it uses the most common languages, programming languages out there. And we're going to start with HTML5 and CSS3. Now, uh, who here can give me a definition on what HTML is? Hypertext Markup Language. Hypertext Markup Language, thank you. And outside of that, what does, what does HTML do? Anybody? It says what to display on your website, what to display on your page. Uh -huh. Very good. It describes the content that you're displaying on your, on your page. And uh, I had my presenter notes, which I can't see for some reason, so I'm just going to kind of wing it here. Um, HTML5 is an up-and-coming language. Um, uh, you may have heard, you know, XHTML, HTML4. Uh, HTML5 is uh, the spec that is being used mostly uh, in, in modern web browsers today and in modern themes and, uh, and things like that. So that's what HTML5 is. Uh, now who can explain to me what CSS is? Cascading style sheets? 
that one right here? OK, that's, that's right. And CSS basically uh, is, is the presentation piece uh, of HTML. It takes the HTML and styles it to make it look pretty, basically, in layman's term. And so, uh, and so right now, we're going to go through just uh, a little bit. I'm going to show you some code about what HTML5 looks like, how you, can, how you can point it out, or how you can recognize that HTML5 is being used on your website. And uh, we're also going to go through maybe some of the, the key things about HTML5 that, uh, HTML5 that are useful um, uh, for you. So let's do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, uh, as you all know, WordPress 3.8 uh, just came out today. And with WordPress 3.8, this is WordPress 3.8, came a new theme called 2014. And I don't know if anybody has seen what 2014 looks like. Can everybody kind of see that? Um, it's a it's a very modern uh, modern theme that uh, is useful to a lot of people, and so we're going to look at some of the code of 2014 uh, and point out the pieces that make it HTML5 specific. So the first place I'm going to go to in this theme is the header.php file, and we're going to point out some of the HTML5 pieces of this theme. So in any theme or in any HTML document, you always have what's called the doc type. Um, now, uh, there are many different kinds of doc types, uh, but the way that we can tell that this is HTML5 is by just saying doc type HTML. In other HTML specs, it has quite a bit more information um, inside this doc type. In fact, let me just bring up other doc types. For example, this is a doc type for XHTML 1.0 strip. Uh, there are other XHTML doc types such as transitional. Uh, uh, so uh, the main thing about HTML5 is it gets rid of uh, all of this other stuff uh, in here so that it just has HTML. That's one quick way that you can tell that you have an HTML5 site is if you uh, go to the web page, for example, and you look at the source of that web page, Notice that it has stock type HTML. So that's just a quick way to know that you're using HTML5. Okay. Some other really specific things about HTML5 that's different from XHTML is that it added some additional tags to describe content. And uh, one of those tags is header. Um, and let's see if I can find a couple other Another tag is, is nav, for example, that describes a navigation piece of the document. Uh, but you still get a lot of the same tags that you did with like XHTML or HTML 4.1 uh, is just that HTML5 came out and they provided additional tags and attributes of those tags to describe the content even better. Uh, so that's you know, just one difference or a couple differences between HTML5 and XHTML 4.01, I'm sorry, XHTML 1.0 or HTML 4.01. Okay, now we'll look at um, some CSS3, for example. Now, CSS3 is is the modern uh, 
CSS language apart from CSS. So there's CSS standard and then there's CSS3. CSS3 basically just added additional CSS rules uh, that allow you to um, style content even better. And so uh, what we'll do is we'll look for some of these CSS3 uh, tags, such as uh, these uh, browser prefixes, WebKit text size adjust. This is a CS3, CSS3 um, prefix uh, that allows you to, looks like it just allows you to adjust the size of text in a more specific way. Uh, another one that you probably hear a lot is border radius. Border radius is a CSS3 um, tag that allows you to um, round corners on on specific HTML um, uh, content, such as a box or, a, or an image, for example, or allows you to round that stuff. So there's quite a, quite a few more CSS3 uh, tags, and forgive me if I'm seeing some wrong uh, terminology, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm just, I just get nervous when I talk and I tend to ramble, so I apologize. And if, if I get something wrong, please correct me. Uh, you know, we're all here to learn and we're all here to collaborate. And so, uh, so that's CSS3. Um, and, and after the presentation, I'd really like to talk to you guys or answer any questions you guys have about HTML5 or CSS3 or CSS and their role that they play um, in themes for WordPress. Um, they basically are the basic pieces, the basic programming languages of WordPress. <laughs> because HTML describes the content that is being displayed on any web, web page, and CSS basically just allows it to look pretty, uh, which, is, which is really cool. If you think about it. So uh, those are two of the most basic languages inside WordPress that are important to know and to learn about. So I encourage you guys to go out and learn more about HTML5 and CSS3 <coughs> um, and what they do for your sites. Okay. Um, so the next language that you'll find in WordPress is JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript Excuse me. JavaScript is a scripting language. Uh, it's a it's a client side scripting language, meaning that it happens mostly within your browser. And when people talk about programming languages, there's usually a difference between back end programming languages and front end or client side programming languages. And JavaScript is one of them. Uh, JavaScript basically allows. Uh, for manipulation of HTML tags or style tags. Um, it, it can do a lot of really cool things. Um, and some of the more common examples is, for example, an image slider that you see on your homepage. Uh, JavaScript is used to transition those images uh, in a horizontal or vertical way so that they look cool and they transition well and things like that. Uh, JavaScript is also used for image preloading and, and other techniques to make your web page faster. Um, and some of the more, so there's, there's basic JavaScript, which is used throughout the web, but there's also uh, JavaScript libraries, which some of them include jQuery, which is very common across the web. Used a lot, jQuery UI, which is just a UI interface with your jQuery. Um, and another more recent ones are backbone.js or underscore.js. Uh, and these libraries are basically used to give you a shortcut. Um, they help you to not write so much JavaScript. Uh, they give you functions in and libraries to manipulate the web page however you want. It's, it's important to learn the difference between a 
JavaScript library and native JavaScript because they are different. But most of the most of the time, jQuery or another library like Bluetooth or something like that is used um, to extend JavaScript and to make life easier uh, on the program. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at some of the JavaScript that is included uh, in 2014. So 2014 has uh, uses what's called, it, it leverages uh, something that WordPress provides called the customizer. I don't know if anybody's ever used this, but if we click customize, it basically brings us into this nice interface where we can uh, change certain pieces uh, of the site in real time. So WordPress uh, test site. See how it changed the title as I was typing? Let's just say this is a test site. There's no display there, but we can change colors, for example. We can change the, uh, it's not, it's kind of, uh, not that high a resolution, but let's just change the title color, for example. Like uh, maybe a green or a yellow or something like that. And this is all JavaScript that's happening right here. JavaScript is, is basically taking my commands that I'm entering into the browser here, and it's basically obeying what I tell it to. And so let's take a look at that customizer JavaScript. So this is in jQuery. And uh, basically, WordPress provides some functions uh, to help us uh, change the blog name, for example. Uh, you know, value.bind, site title A text to this uh, value that we pass in here. So this blog name for example, or the site title, whatever we put in here, it in real time takes that value and inserts it onto the two method. And so that's some of the things that WordPress, uh, I'm sorry, JavaScript can do for your site. It can provide an interactive experience. Whereas other languages like PHP that are more back-end programming languages uh, can't do they have to compile in real time. In JavaScript, they can do a lot of things to improve that user experience um, for, the, for the user that you're trying to target. So uh, that's, that's a little bit of JavaScript and what it does. And JavaScript can be used in many different ways uh, for themes or for content sliders or for uh, accordions. So let's say you have a fact page and you just want to display the question, but you want to hide the answer and you want the user to get interact with it, you can use JavaScript to build kind of an accordion layout so that when they click on the title, the, the answer to the frequently asked question drops down instead of them seeing question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. It basically compacts the interface and provides a better user experience. Um, so that's basically what JavaScript is and how it's used in WordPress. Sorry, is yeah. JavaScript also totally replacing Flash with um, the animation stuff that's happening with sliders? It, it, it is. I mean, it, uh, I wouldn't say that Flash is dead, but JavaScript and HTML5, because HTML5 is providing a lot of um, functionality to your Canvas attribute, that kind of replaces Flash, or you can do the same things uh, that you can in Flash. But I don't think Flash is dead yet, but it's definitely trending towards being gone forever and being replaced by JavaScript and libraries built on top of JavaScript, like jQuery, Backbone, and, you know, there's, there's, there's tons of libraries that are built on, on top of JavaScript. In fact, let me just uh, give you guys uh, 
uh, an idea of how many libraries of JavaScript are actually included uh, inside WordPress. If we come to the codex, for example, it tells us uh, since 3.5, all of these libraries, which you see jQuery a lot, video libraries, uh, suggest libraries, uh, Ajax, so asynchronous libraries, are included inside WordPress to provide additional functionality to improve that user experience. So one of the one of the nice things in uh, uh, WordPress 3.8 is you get a lot of admin fees um, inside the app. And for example, you can change the light, the blue. Coffee, the sunrise, the ocean, midnight. This selecting of these things, that's all happening through JavaScript mm -hmm. and injecting the CSS that it needs for that thing onto it. Um, and so WordPress provides a lot of these utility JavaScript libraries uh, to be able to perform these functions. Uh, does, that, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. This is new in create, right? Yes. That is awesome if you're happy to take a site into development. Because I always, if I have two sites, one is a staging and one's not, yeah. I'll accidentally make a change to the wrong one. Yeah. And so if you change the color of one of them yeah. so that it's obvious which one you're working on, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. And another cool thing inside WordPress 3.8 is the admin is actually the sponsor. So that's another area where JavaScript is becoming very popular. To enable responsive um, or uh, breakpoints in sites. I mean, you can use CSS, but JavaScript is used in addition to that. So, for example, if I just move my browser just to the corner, you get a, a, a glimpse of what the responsive uh, website or admin actually looks like. And it goes all the way down to mobile. And so, JavaScript and CSS uh, is used to perform those functions. Okay. Uh, another language that is used inside WordPress is PHP. Uh, now, who can tell me what PHP stands for? Anybody? This is actually a really interesting. Go ahead. PHP Hypertext Processor. PHP Hypertext Processor. That's right. And what's funny about it is it stands. It has the acronym inside uh, the description of the language. So PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. And I had the, the definition of why this happens is this confuses many people because the first word of the acronym is the acronym, so PHP. This type of acronym is called a recursive acronym. Just you know, a good bit of trivia for you there. Not that it really matters, but you know, People get the hypertext processor right, a preprocessor, but a lot of times they don't. They forget to include the, the PHP part of that definition. <coughs> yeah. What's that? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not that good at English. I just thought this was <laughs> <laughs> because it's recursive. Yeah. No, no, you're fine. It, it, it was very interesting to me, at least when I was doing the research for this talk. And that, uh, that was the case. So, PHP is what's uh, commonly known as a back end or server side programming language. And it basically provides uh, the engine and the structure of what makes WordPress. And the reason why PHP is used inside WordPress is because, number one, it's very easy to use. Uh, it's very easy to program and to make things work with PHP. Uh, another reason it's used in WordPress is it's one of the most popular programming languages used in the web today. Um, now, if, when they first created it, it probably wasn't as popular, I guess. Um, you know, you have to ask Matt Mullenweg about that. But 
Uh, it definitely turned out to be a very good choice uh, for WordPress for its ease of use. Um, it, it, don't get me wrong, it has some flaws, but it's very easy to use. And the common programmer uh, that doesn't have very much knowledge or experience uh, programming can use PHP to create uh, quite a bit really fast. And so uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at some PHP that is used inside WordPress. Now, uh, I don't know how familiar you guys are with WordPress, but in every WordPress team, there's always a file called functions.php. And the functions.php file inside a theme uh, is, is used to contain whatever custom functions or custom programming you want so that you can use them inside your theme. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the functions file for uh, 2014. It's, it's kind of long, but it, it has quite a bit of PHP in it that I think we can uh, kind of just use as, as a demonstration and an example. So uh, inside 2014, there's a function called 2014 set. And this function exists to set up some uh, some variables to load languages for that theme, um, to add uh, styles to that theme, to set sizes for uh, post thumbnails, um, to register navigation menus so that we can use them inside WordPress. Um, it adds theme support for HTML5. Um, it also adds theme support for post formats, etc. So this is kind of, I mean, we can't go through everything about PHP, but this is just an example of what it looks like, first of all, and some of the things that you can do with PHP inside WordPress. You know, we're not talking about PHP generally, we're just talking about inside WordPress. And WordPress has leveraged PHP to give you a set of functions and um, other utilities uh, that are called hooks and filters. You don't have to understand that, but they basically allow you to hook into WordPress and modify the core functionality that is used um, inside the admin or even on the front end of your website. So for example, Inside WordPress, remember how we just went over and it said, uh, but register these navigation menus. You have the primary and you have the secondary navigation menus. So well, let's look at where that is inside WordPress. So if you come to appearance and come down to menus, um, and we create a test menu. It basically allows us to um, to make a display on the top primary menu or the secondary menu uh, in the sidebar, and that's what was registered right here. So PHP basically allows you to modify core functionality and to extend WordPress in a way that is uh, helpful to you and helpful to the clients or users that you're allowing inside WordPress. Um, so that's basically what PHP is. It's a server-side language that has to uh, run from top to bottom, uh, and it has to run on page load uh, of the website. Um, so there's lots to talk about PHP, but I'm trying to be as brief and informative as possible. And afterwards, if I got anything wrong, you guys can point that out and you know, suggest uh, other things or we'll take questions. Uh, but uh, that is PHP. OK, um, so we have PHP inside WordPress. But WordPress also uses a very important piece of technology to help it run. And that is MySQL. Now, MySQL is a RD BMS, uh, a relational database management system uh, that allows 
uh, PHP to interact with it so that it can store data uh, about WordPress, uh, about what's happening inside WordPress. Um, it can store user information. It can store content from posts, from pages. It's basically the backbone, um, if, if you call it, of WordPress. It, 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 uh, without MySQL, WordPress would not work. So MySQL is that. And MySQL is a query language. It's called it's a, the SQL and MySQL stands for structured query language. And it's basically like PHP in a way, but it directly interacts with the database. And so I'm going to show you some of those um, queries that happen inside WordPress. And this is kind of what it looks like. So, in fact, I'm going to open up the database here. And this is uh, the, data, the default database table structure of WordPress. And we have a table called WP Users, which uh, stores everything about each user uh, inside WordPress. Uh, we also have a, another table called WP Posts. Which it stores all the data about every page, every custom post type, or, or blog post that is published inside WordPress. And there's a couple other tables, but I think for now we'll just focus on them. So the WP users table is very useful inside WordPress because it stores that user information. But I'm going to show you just quickly how you can use structured query language to change the password um, of, of a user inside WordPress. So we're going to go to this query browser. We're just going to paste this in. And basically what this says is update the WP users database table and set the user password and encrypt it oh, um, where the user login equals uh, let's see. So the user login in this situation is WP. So we're just going to set that, and then we're going to run. So if it ran with no errors, run with one row effective, taking 1.1 milliseconds. So it's very, very quick uh, to perform its database operations. So now, I'm just going to copy this password. If I come back to my WordPress install, notice that it locked me out because I changed the password. So if I put in the username, WP, and the password that I have, locks me. So I just changed the, the default admin user, which the username is not admin, um, uh, to a different password using a uh, structured query language, which is what MySQL is. So inside WordPress, PHP, when it interacts with users or it creates posts or it creates pages, it executes these, uh, these commands to the database to do certain actions, such as resetting the password, uh, updating the content of the page, um, updating the publisher of the page, for example. And it does it so quickly that you don't really realize that it's actually happening. And it can get caught up sometimes, but MySQL is a very stable and uh, very fast uh, technology. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why it's used inside WordPress and used all around the world. MySQL is one of the most popular, in fact, it's the second most popular um, RGDMS, or Relational Database Management System, in the world. Uh, it's used on lots of different sites. Facebook, for example, uses MySQL. It uses other database management systems as well, but one of its main ones is MySQL. And so... What's the number one? Uh, the number one, uh, I believe, uh, is, uh, is Oracle. Uh, but I could be wrong. SQLite. SQLite is number one? Yeah. <laughs> so, 
uh, that's just so I just wanted to point out that MySQL, without MySQL, uh, we wouldn't be able to store data, we wouldn't be able to retrieve data uh, for WordPress to work. Okay, uh, that's pretty much the presentation. Um, again, these languages, HTML5, HTML, CSS, CSS3, JavaScript, JavaScript libraries such as jQuery and Backbone, PHP, MySQL, those are the four programming languages inside WordPress. And without them, uh, WordPress would probably, I mean, it might exist, but it might not have worked as well as it does today. And it might not be the most popular content management system uh, in the world. So uh, I guess we'll take questions. Yeah, we Sure. Um, we'll take guests. ASP? ASP? Yeah. I have a long time ago. Uh, Is that going away? ASP, no. No, it's and still anything? very alive and well. Uh, you know, Microsoft uses ASP and Microsoft related technology to use ASP and C sharp. Uh, but I don't see it going away, it's just less popular. Okay, any other questions? Go ahead. I wonder if anybody here has any uh, experience. Blue Blue Connors, yeah, it's a popular plugin for WordPress. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, I'm sure we could figure out some other. Yeah, go ahead. Uh huh. So uh, there are a lot of really popular languages out there. One of them is PHP. Another is Ruby on Rails. If you've ever heard of that, uh, you know another another is ASP .NET. But I don't see PHP going away. Um, in fact, I see it being improved upon it. I mean, they've made great strides in this last year of improving the language. Uh, the problem is getting everybody to get on the latest version uh, of the programming language. And so I don't see I don't see it going away, um, especially because some of the most popular sites in the world use it, and I doubt they want to change. So. Well, it might be yeah, yeah, I, I see that happening. Um, another shift in kind of the web right now is using JavaScript. JavaScript, uh, even on the server side, you know, you get into like Node.js, for example, which is a full, you know, web server that people can use to run, uh, you know, database interactions and things like that. So JavaScript is is definitely becoming a really popular language right now. Uh, but just pure HTML5 and CSS apps um, are also possible in the modern web world right now. So PHP may become less popular, kind of like Flash, but I don't see it going away any kind of soon. Maybe in like 10 years when we completely, you know, move down from server-side program. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. You know? okay. yeah. So the responsive nature of a theme um, is specific to that theme. So you know WordPress right now, WordPress Super for this theme. Now. So the admin theme uh, is responsive, and that's the CSS you know presentation layer uh, of a web page. Uh, but not all themes, and not even previous versions of WordPress are not responsive. Um, so it just depends on the food you put it or the house food, whether or not it's just You still go to that XHTML? XHTML? XHTML is just another spec of HTML or specification. Um, and gosh, it's, it's been in use for a long time. Um, and it's an 
I'm not sure if it's an E in a food spec, I think it is. Um, but I'm not an expert on XHTML. Um, but uh, it, it definitely it brought some improvements to HTML and how it um, uh, structured content and described it. Um, but with HTML5 coming up, and then really don't need to worry about the difference between XHTML and HTML5. Go ahead. Did you have a uh, Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So when you do an export of codes, like you can move codes from one place to another, mm -hmm. it downloads an X XML, XML file. Uh, yes, but it's, it's technically in XML. It's an XML file. Okay. Yes. Right. So XHTML, very closely related with XML, uh, which was up and coming, and then I kind of everybody into it. So, I mean, it's still in use, but not in use. Because yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's in use. In fact, WordPress uses it quite a bit. But I think that I think people are trying to go away from XML. Very useful, but there are other things that are replacing it, like JSON, for example. We've never heard of that. So, uh, any other questions? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, wow. Um, let's see. There are there's some good websites out there. I don't know if I necessarily have a favorite. Um, I would say probably some of my uh, some of my own. We've uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So there's a a local website. Um, that we did a while ago. Um, for the desert mountain community, I don't know if you've ever been out there. But this site is completely built on WordPress and it uses pretty much every it uses every language that we talked about today. Um, for example, on this home page, the slider, that's using JavaScript. Um, Interactivity whenever you over a site. So yeah. So this interactivity, that is all JavaScript. Um, and it's built on WordPress, so um, everything about this site, uh, content management system behind it is WordPress. Um, they take registration through WordPress. They, <coughs> excuse me. They take subscribers through WordPress, uh, things like that. So uh, they're quite. There's quite a bit going on in this website that kind of embodies everything that you would use um, WordPress for. You know, they have a blog that, that allows them to post news updates and things like that, and that was kind of the original intention of WordPress. But it's really evolved into this content management system that allows you to manage each piece of content on a specific website. And so uh, I would say this one's a favorite. Um, there are a tons, and man, I wish I would have. <laughs> I kind of draw a blank when I get nervous, so uh, forgive me for not remembering some. Uh, but there, there are a lot, and if you would like part of this presentation, I can create a slide and post some of my favorite ones uh, so that you guys can. Are the fonts here from Google Fonts? No, these are. Um, uh, these are embedded font faces, so like, this font face, yeah. 
file faces from a font score, for example, are used on the site, uh, open source type fonts uh, that don't have you know, copyright restrictions, so they're open source, they can be used to be uh, used. <laughs> Um, I have a question about uh, how uh, I actually develop uh, a WordPress project. Uh, I develop uh, thinking in two parts: uh, the web, the website part that that the user look, mm -hmm. and the uh, administration mm -hmm. part when I set up. The, I always mm -hmm. have to develop it thinking in two parts. Mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in every project, you've got to take into account both sides. So you want the best possible experience for your users that are visiting the site, but you also want the best possible experience for the clients that are updating the site constantly. Mm -hmm. And so, a lot of times in a WordPress project, you will develop the front end of the website, and you'll also do quite a bit on the admin side to customize it, uh, to make it easy to use for your client that may be using it. You know, you may want to hide some of the WordPress admin menus uh, because they won't be using them. Uh, you may want to post additional help messages inside the WordPress admin so that they know how to do something, the size of an image when they upload it. Um, there's, there's all kinds of things that you could do in the WordPress admin to customize it for your client or the other students you do. Um, I was wondering about the download button. Mm -hmm. Are sliders going to be more useful? Are they useful? Well, they're fine. They're pretty. It's just I'm missing out on something where you have to add that, you know, a restaurant where you want to serve it. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's the tough part. It just depends on which gallery plugin you choose. Um Can I ask which one you use? Just for an example. Okay. So it's a free plugin. It's one of the free plugins. Yeah. 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 Uh, it really just depends on, on the plugin and um, when you're talking about galleries and sliders. I tend to go more the page route to get that quality. Sure. Um, I just, I knew that you could, you know, you know, you could call it a team. Yeah. Good point. Uh, you know, they're all over the place, but a great uh, slider or gallery for me would, I would probably have to recommend, you know, just off the top of my head, slide deck. Yeah. Okay. Not very much left. Um, another one. Is so we, yeah you can use that one or but the the, the the and you might want to try just using the default the first gallery if you're just talking about a gallery so thumbnails of uh, images uh, or you're talking about a slider on that. Really don't Yeah, it's just the challenge of getting your theme that you bought in the gallery plugin to kind of work together to make um, what you or the look and feel that you're trying to accomplish. Sometimes can be really tough, and I would recommend you know giving the advice of the developer or maybe can you figure out the problem that, that you're having. And sometimes it helps having a designer there as well. And I know in our office, our designers and our developers work very closely together. 
so that we can provide the best possible experience. Sometimes we do, um, but sometimes it's just theme actors creating themes and they built sometimes inside their theme a gallery functionality. Um, and sometimes it can work and sometimes it can't. So it just depends on, on what you're trying to combine and, and things like that. So it's kind of a, a loaded question that I think you probably just need to consult with someone that you know, knows what's happening and you know, can tell you, you know, hey, if you just do this one little thing, they'll look at it. You know? So it, it, it just depends. I guess it's my answer. Okay. Any, uh, any other questions? Go ahead. Corey, could you share a little bit about how you uh, became a WordPress developer? Like, uh, how you got started and how yeah. it's evolved? Yeah, it's kind of an interesting story, actually. I graduated from college in information systems in December of 2008. I had a job offer, and it was rescinded. And we were basically left high and dry. We had all our stuff packed. My wife had to go back and get the apartment back that we had just left. So it was a kind of a scary time. We just decided, hey, because we were up in Utah at the time, so we just kind of wanted to get out of the cold weather, so we decided to just move to Arizona without a job. And I had done programming, um, you know, quite a bit of programming, but my original goal was to work um, as a sysadmin, you know, work with data centers and things like that. And I got down here, there really wasn't that much work, and I just got into freelancing uh, on WordPress, and then uh, Dallin Harris, our boss, uh, Skyhub's CEO, uh, he called me up and said, hey, you know, I've got this company running, you know, do you want to come work? And I was like, heck yeah, I do. And that's how I got into developing for WordPress, and it just kind of became this obsession um, with developing on one of the most powerful and extensible platforms um, out there. So that's kind of how I got into WordPress, and I plan on being in WordPress development uh, for a long time. Thanks, awesome. Does Skype exclusively work with WordPress? For, for a content management system, yes. Mm -hmm. So we do other development, like app development sometimes, mm -hmm. but it's not our core competency. So we tend to just stick with WordPress, um, and it works out really well for our clients and the users that are using the sites. So very powerful. Okay, I'll take uh, one more question. Anybody has one? Okay. Well, it was it was a pleasure talking to you guys today. If you have any other WordPress questions, just feel free to reach out. I'll uh, get the link to my slides and uh, all the links and, and code samples that I gave you, um, so that you guys can go back and look at it and reference it if you want. And I'll even give a slide of my favorite WordPress sites that use uh, everything about WordPress. So there you go. Thank you. Gotta get off to the next meeting, so I didn't want to keep you any longer. Um, let's go ahead and uh, I think, think for the rest of it, let's just go ahead and shut down for the Google Hangout because I think the rest of it's going to be more show and tell and stuff. So.